Welcome to CarDesign.Academy and uh, today I'm going to show you uh, how to set up your uh, wheels and tires in, um, in Gravity Sketch in order to start building a dimensionally accurate exterior model. Uh, so if you remember I did a series of recent tutorials in which I show you how to quickly build a set of tires in uh, Alias using uh, accurate dimensions to a known, uh, to a known vehicle. Uh, so in, in, in this case I did a Corvette, I did a pickup truck, and I did uh, a, a, like a mid-size crossover based on the Range Rover Velar. Uh, so um, here I'm just going to show you how to set up uh, um, a set of the set up the wheels and tires in Gravity Sketch along with a side view sketch in order to uh, begin a model that is based on uh, a theme sketch. So I'm going to go ahead and click on a new sketch, and uh, I'm going to also get, turn on my mirror plane. This is going to give me some some somewhat of an orientation. I uh, just want to make sure that the model I bring in is oriented uh, correctly in space. Uh, and then I'm going to go to Cloud Prefabs. And uh, you can see there's a, there's a couple of mannequins. There's some other objects that you can bring in that are preloaded into Gravity Sketch. But um, uh, if I hit Import Models and Cloud Prefabs, uh, these, are, these are items that I, these are the wheels and tires that I uh, brought in from, um, from Alias. Um, and they've been converted to an OBJ file. That's the file format that, that Gravity Sketch recognizes. So, um, so I'm going to bring the Corvette wheels into this space and I'm going to place them in the space in a way that is to full, to full size uh, in an accurate orientation. So, um, so I'm gonna click on load OBJ to, for Corvette wheels. You'll see, uh, you'll see the, uh, the wheels load up in the menu here. Then I can just grab them and drag them over to this box here, which is going to be our scaling box. And uh, you'll see um, there's a couple of there's a couple of different um, uh, adjustments here. So, for example, let's say this thing came in uh, in the wrong orientation. I can I can just click on these arrows. Um, and uh, so right now it's it's in the correct orientation. It's sitting level uh, to the ground plane and um, and then uh, as far as scaling goes, uh, I can you set the scaling to centimeters, millimeters. You can see it, it becomes one-tenth the size. I can set it to meters. And it becomes you know, much larger. Um, but uh, uh, centimeters seems to be uh, correct. So if I hit the check mark, that, that brings it into the space. Uh, you'll see also that I built a, uh, a plane at, at the center line, which, is, uh, which represents the length and height of the Corvette, uh, and uh, it's based on the published dimensions, and so um, that's going to give me uh, a basic template for scaling. And you can, as you can see, I also I built the plane slightly off center, so that when I place my sketch on the center line, I can still see it. So um, uh, one thing you'll notice is that um, the tires are are kind of see-through right now, and that's because that's that's one of the the uh, aspects of an OBJ file that that um, uh, that we need to just we just need to do some converting of the of the individual surfaces. So uh, so what you do is you you start selecting every, everything is in a group right now. Um, so um, so you just have to go in and start selecting individual surfaces, and then you you just hit um, uh, convert to subdivisional object. Okay, and you can see a bunch of control points comes up. Um, and I hit the check mark on that. Okay, and then um, there's just I just got to keep selecting each individual surface, and I can also uh, turn on the smoothing. So if I if I do that, I can turn on smoothing. It becomes a smooth surface. And it's a, it's a bit of a pain, but um, but there there now you have you know now you have a complete a complete tire. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do the same with the rear. Turn on the smoothing.
and also do these back surfaces as well. Okay, let's hit this one. Okay, so now you have a, 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 a solid tire, right? And um, I can even go in and add, I can, I can go in and select it. And uh, so now the, these have all become separate surfaces. So I can go ahead and group these again by holding the middle finger button on the right controller and at the same time hitting this purple button here that groups everything again. Okay, um, actually I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and leave it ungrouped for now. Um, I'm also gonna turn on sub D for the center mirror plane and yeah, so we'll, we'll delete that later. All right, so, um, so then as I was saying, I can go in and change the shader. So I like to use a reflective material even for a tire, just gives it a little more sheen. Uh, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and give it a dark. Give it a dark tire finish. Okay, and then um, now I'm gonna bring in my sketch. So um, I'm gonna go into two reference images, Cloud Ref, and you should see a series of sketches appear. I'm gonna look for my Corvette sketch. There they are. Okay, so this is my Corvette side view. So I'm gonna bring that in to the workspace. I'm gonna hit the anchor button. Um, and one, one thing that I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna introduce layers. So I have, I have right now everything on a single layer. Um, what I'm gonna do is add another layer and that's gonna be my, um, my side view layer. So I'm gonna call that uh, side view. Okay, and what I can do is drag and drop the sketch into the side view layer, and I can take this slider here and make it transparent. Okay, so that way as I'm working over the sketch, it's, it's, it's gonna look, uh, it's, it's not gonna get in the way. So, so now I'm gonna scale it up, start to scale it up to, to full size. And as I start to move it towards the center plane, you'll see as I get near the center plane, it's gonna kind of snap itself right to the center plane. Okay, and then um, now, I'm gonna, now I'm gonna do is start to scale the sketch so that it's roughly the same length and height as that, uh, as that uh, plane that I created. So you can see it's, it's roughly the same length and height. You can see the wheels aren't quite lined up and that's because this is a cheated sketch. So um, we're, we're gonna do some adjustments. Um, I'm gonna actually bring it forward just a little bit. Um, so the wheels, are, are they start to get a little more aligned. You can bring the sketch down a little bit. There. That's starting to look a little more, a little more aligned. You bring the sketch a little further forward. I want this car to have actually quite a, a long front overhang and a, a short rear overhang. Um, one of the things about building a car over a side view sketch is you tend to you tend to you tend to um, draw a side view of a car as a perspective view, not a true, true orthographic view. Whereas when you're working in 3D, you're actually working to a true orthographic view. So what I do is in Gravity Sketch, I'm just I'm kind of zooming into a perspective side view in which the tires are more or less aligned with the sketch. So, um, so that tells me maybe I can back the sketch back up a little bit. So, so now as I zoom into like sort of a medium distance uh, perspective, uh, those tires are starting to be aligned uh, with the sketch. So, um, so now I can go in and delete this uh, reference plane. And now when I, so, so when I snap it to full size, um, so by the way, if you want to look at something in full size really quick, you just use the left controller and you hit the trigger and you hit the, the middle finger button, hold them together, and then it snaps to full size. And then you, as you rotate your, 
your arm, it, it actually rotates the view um, around. So, so that way you have everything you need to get uh, started on uh, a dimensionally accurate exterior. Now, if I want to go in and uh, bring a mannequin into this, um, now I go back into my uh, prefabs and go back to built-in models, grab the, the, the male mannequin, uh, bring, bring him into the scale box here, and you can see he shows up. I'm gonna turn him this way, and so now I have a male mannequin. Um, I'm gonna put him back into the main. Uh, in fact, what, I'll, what I'm gonna do is add another layer. I'm gonna call that, um, I'll call that uh, uh, dude. Hey dude, okay. Okay, so there he is. Um, I'm gonna give him like kind of a white, a white shader. I just like to make him white because they're, they're, it just kind of keeps him blended into the background a little bit. And then, um, by the way, smart move. Uh, if you if you want to move an object in a, in within a an axis, if you just kind of align your, if you just align your controllers, um, you can see the blue line appear. That means that now I can I you know I can move my controller everywhere, but it'll it'll stay. Um, all of the movement will happen within this this one axis as long as I'm holding the uh, the button here. So um, so I'm going to move him back a bit, and I'm going to start to position. Uh, oh yeah, I better lock this side view layer too. I'm going to lock that. I'm going to lock the wheels as well. So now I can't accidentally select those. So. Um, Okay, so uh, I'm gonna take my mannequin and I'm gonna turn on the control points. Now with the mannequin, you, when, you turn on the, uh, when you turn on the control points, you'll see there's green, these green points. Um, but then if you, if you take your right hand thumb, thumb button and um, slide it to the right just a little bit, you see you get, an, you get another set of control points, so many more control points. In fact, you get, you get to move the fingers and the wrists and the toes and everything. So um, I like to work with these. Um, and, and it's just easier to control the point. So what I do is I grab, first of all, um, grab, the whole, uh, grab the whole mannequin, uh, tilt him back a bit, uh, tilt his head up a little bit, um, and then grab his legs, and he's, he's gonna be, you know, he's in a sports car, so he's gonna be very, very laid back. And then um, position his arms as if he's grabbing a steering wheel. And I'm just gonna look at, look at him in, in view here and see. Um, yeah. So something like that maybe. And then um, let's get his legs up a little bit more. Oop. I like to grab, if you grab both points, you move, move everything together. So that's a very aggressive driving position, but somewhat appropriate for a mid-engine supercar. So I'm gonna uh, uh, lay him. Uh, actually, let me let me do this really quick. Just tilt his torso up a little bit. Okay, that makes him look a little more comfortable. Now I'm gonna move him down into the vehicle, and you can see I can now I, now I have a very accurate uh, representation um, of where he's sitting relative to the to the vehicle. So you know this is a mid-engine vehicle, so he's he's very forward in the vehicle. Um, I might actually move him back just a little bit. Um, Maybe set him down a little lower. That should keep him somewhat comfortable. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and look at that in full size. So that looks fairly reasonable. And, um, and now I can now I can shift him to the side a little bit. So and now. It's important to leave a little bit of room between the head and the center line because um, you're going to want to put some curvature in that roof. So, you know, if I, um, you know, if I, if I draw a line, you know, across here, you're going to want to put some curvature on that roof. Uh, so, you know, so you're going to want to keep his head slightly below center line like that. So, uh, okay. So, um, so there you have pretty much everything you need to set up a dimensionally accurate uh, exterior model. So um, uh, in the next uh, series of demos, I'm gonna start, um, I'm gonna do the same setup for 
a couple of other vehicles that I'm that I'm working on, and and then I'll be able to uh, do some exterior modeling demos. And so uh, this will be a lot of fun. Look, I hope you learn a lot in this 10-week uh, intensive, and I look forward to catching you on the next video.